If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. Ask Hashem for wisdom, not doctrine. Do not say, oh God, <laughs> unless you want to make Satan very happy. If you want to make Satan happy, do this. Say, oh, please reveal the truth to me. If you do that, oh, Sutton is very happy. Stop that. Hi, my name is Steve Nicholas. I am from the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I have a question for Mr. Tobia Singer. I was a Christian. I'm still on the fence, back and forth. My question to Tobia is, if Christ is not the Messiah, in the Tanakh, the Messiah, is it an individual, or is it a group of people like Israel, or God, or angels, does that matter? Is it a deity of some sort? I'd appreciate if Tobia could clear that up for us. I understand that his outlook is that there is Jesus Christ, wasn't the Messiah, is there somebody that's supposed to fulfill something that hasn't been fulfilled yet, or is it as simple as us turning to the Abrahamic God, repenting and being forgiven? Please let me know. Thank you. God bless. So we always begin with Tanakh. And forgive me for being presumptuous, but you sound like you're an American. You live in a country that's Christian, predominantly Christian, culturally Christian, and, and therefore you understandably view Jewish ideas through a Christian culture. Moreover, you said you're a Christian or were a Christian or you were on the fence. So it's very important to jettison all your preconceived notions about the Messiah because they all come through the the filter of the church, that's very dangerous. Rather, go to Tanakh, not to Rabbi Singer, not to go to the Hebrew Bible. What does Scripture tell us? The Messiah is very much a person. If you want to get a sense of what kind of person he will be, he'll be very much like King David. In fact, Tanakh tells us his name is David. You could t take that literally, that's what his name will be, or you can view passages like Ezekiel 37, 24, and 25, and that's a very important chapter for you to explore, that David is a picture of the Messiah. You can view it that way. Regardless, King David of blessed memory made mistakes, huge mistakes in his life. What separates King David and other great men is that when they made a mistake and became aware of it, they confessed and repented. That's what made them different. They were not sinless. None of our leaders were. Okay, Messiah is going to fear God. He's not divine. Please don't be offended, but the mere fact that you can think that the Messiah is divine means that you have spent so many years in a place filled with tobacco odor that when you walk out of the place like that, you still the you still reek of tobacco. I remember years ago I was in Indonesia and had to meet a number of people. Indonesia, people smoke a lot. Indonesia was my home for a long time, so... I, I I don't say anything negative about it, but people smoke too much in Indonesia. And I remember, you know, meeting a whole bunch of folks in this, I don't know, was it a like a hotel conference room? People were smoking. I could barely breathe. But the point was, when I got out of there, everything... My clothing reeked of tobacco, and that's what happens to people who leave the church. The stench of the tobacco is still all around them. It's very important to 
send your clothes to the cleaners and take a big long shower. Okay, the the very the idea that the Messiah could be divine that means that you spend so much time in a place so filled with the stench of tobacco. Listen to me, my brother. I know I haven't offended you. The Bible tells us about the Messiah. I strongly encourage you to open Isaiah chapter 11. As an example, describes the Messiah, who is a descent of Jesse, David. He's that branch from that root who will not judge people after the sight of his eyes, the spirit of Hashem will be upon him, and he will be filled with the fear of God. See Isaiah 11, verse 2. See Isaiah 11, verse 3, really. That's all you need to do. If you open up Isaiah 11, which is one of the most ecstatic messianic chapters in all of Tanakh, in essence, every feature of the messianic age is there on display for the world to see. It's not about following rabbis. Just look it up for yourself. You'll immediately do tshuva. The Mashiach is going to be a continuation of a promise, a Davidic promise, a covenant, an heir to the Davidic throne, a descendant of King Solomon. During his reign, there'll be a worldwide knowledge of Hashem. All the world will know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There won't be multiple religions in the world. If you, if you live in a world where people have different views about God, that means the Messiah has not come and the world is unredeemed because the knowledge of Hashem covers the earth as the water covers the sea. How do you know that? Because a Jew in Jerusalem said that? No. Because Isaiah 11 says that. Please see verse 9. See the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 14. In those days, no one will have to teach his neighbor or brother about God, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 31, verse 30. Three, the, there'll be a world peace. See Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. See Isaiah 11. There'll be a world peace, my friend. Right now, you know how many battles that are going on right now? Your country, the United States, is engaged in how many battles right now? How many wars? Your, the ships of the United States, aircraft carriers are engaging right now with enemies all over the world. The world is unredeemed. Russia and the Ukraine at war, the world is unredeemed. The sons of Yishmael and the sons of Isaac at war, the world is unredeemed. Persia at war with the world, the world is unredeemed. North Korea firing missiles, the world is unredeemed. When the true Mashiach comes, all the nations will speak besafa bruro. They'll speak in a pure speech, and they'll invoke the name of Hashem and will speak of one accord. Do you see religious discord? The world is unredeemed. The Temple Mount. Do you see a base Hamigdosh? Do you see a temple? The temple described in Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, which contain the copious details of the unused blueprints of the final Messianic temple. It isn't there. The world is unredeemed. Do you see a church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem with its statues that people bow to every day? The world is unredeemed. Look at the Mount of Olives, oldest Jewish cemeteries in the world. 
are there the the bodies of those who are faithful buried there? The world is unredeemed because I have a Bible that tells us that dead men shall rise together. There'll be an awakening. There are many who sleep in the earth that will rise, some for everlasting life and others for everlasting contempt and damnation, the physical resurrection of the dead. The world is unredeemed. Here's what I would say to you, my friends. Would you care to read the word of Hashem? I mean, if, if you received a, a letter from God today, wouldn't you read it? I mean, if Hashem sent you a letter, right? You get a letter, and it's from Hashem. Imagine, you know, return address of God. What would you do? You would drop everything you're doing. If your cell phone went off, you would ignore it, and you'd open it. If it was written in a language that you can't read, you would immediately go to someone who can read that language and beg her, please tell me what this letter says. You do everything possible to learn that language. You'd be very grateful to know that the language in which God used to, con to convey his eternal oracles is a very small language, less than 9,000 words in biblical Hebrew. Moreover, only 10% of biblical Hebrew is needed to understand 90%, 90% of Tanakh, 90%. It means less than a thousand words. If you know in Tanakh, if you know less than a thousand words of biblical Hebrew, you will understand 90% of Tanakh. Wouldn't you devote your life every moment would your television ever go on again? Never. You would devote your life to unsending every word. That's what Tanakh is, my friends. Tanakh is a personal letter from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why would you waste a moment studying anything else? Read it. It's all there. And Tanakh was not written for people with fancy IQs, or it wasn't written for angels, written for people like you and me to understand so that we can apprehend the mind of God. And Hashem wrote it in a way that people, humans, not dogs, cats, or frogs, can understand it. So it's really easy to read. Would you consider putting Tanakh first in your life? And then once you read Tanakh and read these ecstatic chapters, like the ones we mentioned, the whole end of Ezekiel, really the last third of the book of Ezekiel is all the Messianic, is all Mashiach, end of days. All you have to do is read it. The vast, vast, vast majority of the citizens of the United States of America believe in God. It's really crazy, and yet they watch reruns of I Love Lucy. Mind-blowing. They watch Jeopardy, whatever shtusim they have. We're crazy. Are you insane? Life is so short. Every moment is a gift. You know how fortunate you are to be alive? You have Tanakh, read it. You have access to it. Today, with so much information accessible, what are you doing? So all I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, is, Pour over Tanakh. It should, should fill your mind. It should be on your lips. Ask Hashem for wisdom, not doctrine. Don't do it. <laughs> do not say, oh, God, <laughs> unless you want to make Satan very happy. If you want to make Satan happy, do this. Say, oh, please reveal the truth to me. If you do that, oh, Satan is very happy. Stop that. You're not a prophet. <laughs> Ask Hashem for wisdom, certainly for the redemption, your health, of course, your marriage, absolutely. But don't ask for the truth. Don't say, Lord, would you show me a sign? Don't do that. Stop it. We don't go to fortune tellers. Don't do that. You go to Tanakh for the truth. You just ask Hashem for wisdom. Before you ask for anything, acknowledge who he is. 
acknowledge who are you standing before? Like Hannah, she first, she acknowledged who she was talking to. All right, my sweethearts, go up, rise, raise up. There's nothing I'm telling you that's complicated, really. It's all simple. You want to know about Mashiach? Read Ezekiel 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 38 and 39, the precursor to the Messi Messianic age. You'll lose your mind, that's all. What are you wasting your time with all this and with foolishness? It's time to turn to the God of Israel. Anyways, thank you so much for your thoughtful question. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Let Nasa Bechev Tzokor Azai Melech Azai Melech Shemu Nikra Ve'achare Ikiflo Takor Levado Imloch Noah